Hi guys, this is a quickie tutorial on how to um, get uh, polygons of irregular shapes turned into regions files in DS9. So I'm going to do this for BRC34. So what I've already done is I've downloaded the Spitzer data in these two cryptically named directories here, and I have a BRC34 regional file from POS there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get um, all of the final mosaics uh, into DS9. Um, we'll talk about the file name scheme later, but for now you just have to know that these are all um, mosaics of the same uh, target. So here we have um, IREC 1, 2, 3, 4, um, MIPS 24, and then an ancillary serendipitous field of MIPS 24 and MIPS 70. So they're all covering slightly different regions of sky and slightly different um, with slightly different wavelength coverage. So that's, of course, the whole reason why we want um, polygon regions files to, to put on top of a WISE image or a POS image to show people exactly where we're going to be looking. So I've got them all loaded in various frames here, but let me do one single frame and then let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay, go up to region and do shape polygon. Now when I click, I get a square, and if I click, it gets highlighted again, and I can drag it. I'm going to drag it up to be in one corner, and I just happen to know that this is the region of four-band coverage. If I didn't, I could do frame match, frame WCS, and you can see if you um, go through the list that that's the region of four-band Iraq coverage. Okay, so let's go back to not matched. Um, coordinates there. So now I have my polygon started here and you notice that the corners look like this and when I move my mouse over different pieces of it, it changes its shape. So that means create a new vertex and that slightly different cursor means grab and drag that vertex. So I'm going to click and drag that vertex down to that corner. I'm going to click and drag this vertex down to this corner. I'm going to click and drag this vertex over to that corner. So then I have a region that describes that. Now what I want is I want to be able to save this in WCS coordinates. So I'll go up to regions, use save regions. I want to name it something sensible like um, BRC34 um, four band coverage for DS9. So click OK. Now instead of physical coordinates would be like that would be like pixels on the detector. I want WCS. Click OK. Now, I've got this little ancillary serendipitous field over here, so I'm going to move it so that that's in the field of view. I'm going to grab that region, move it over, and not coincidentally, it is the same size, the same angular size on the sky. We might want to move this in a little, but it's not really going to be visible how different that is when in the final image. But now we want to choose, go up to region, and make it a dotted line to indicate um, that this is not the um, this is not the four-band coverage. Now, I don't know... We may have to do this separately. Yeah, it looks like we may have to. Okay, so now we're going to region, save regions, and now we're going to call this instead of four band, we're going to call it two band DS9 region file. Okay, so we want to make sure that it's still in WCS, FK5, good. All right, so now we go over to our text editor window, um, and we can see that the regions files are in there. Actually, what we first want to do, if we go, let's see, um, frame, Next. So now I have, this is the region of four-band coverage. So if I do regions, load regions, and I get the four-band coverage from before, because it was in FK5 coordinates, it's going to drop that puppy right, pretty much right on top of where the four-band coverage is. And then over here, this is the four-band, this is the, the other ancillary field. So we can grab and drag that guy right on top of there. And then we also want to load in region, load, the other two band coverage flanking field. So then what it's going to do is it's going to understand that that other field was actually over there. So now I have a region of two regions on the screen. I do region, save regions, and I put both of those in the two band because those are both regions, those are both two band coverage areas. So yes, replace the existing file. Yes, it better be in WCS. Okay. So now over here I can. Um, text edit, just using a plain text editor, the two band regions file and go into it and put, um, let's see, dash equals zero. Let's change that to dash equals one. 
Okay, so now if we go back, let's delete this region, delete that region. So let's load the four band coverage in and we'll put it on top of there and we're gonna load the two band coverage in and it's gonna make them dashed lines on both sides. Okay, so we have, we've gotten the IRAC taken care of. We also have MIPS in here. So let's uh, center the image in the frame. Let's zoom in a little and let's do it again. Region, shape, polygon. Put it in there. If you double click, it'll give you information about it. Let's drag this vertex down here. Let's drag this vertex down here. Let's drag this vertex there. If you accidentally create an extra vertex, you just hit delete on your keyboard and it makes it go away. Now, since this is MIPS, it's going to be longer wavelength. Well, longer wavelength. Let's make it red. And let's regions save. And we're going to save it as MIPS 24. Okay. And we're going to make sure that it is in WCS as well. We go to the frame next. This is, let's see, zoom center image, zoom in. This is the ancillary serendipitously obtained MIPS data. So we do it again, region, shape, polygon. Drop it on there, drag it over to the corner, move the vertices to indicate the region, the full extent of the data approximately. Change the color and do save regions and we want to do MIPS 24 but not overwrite it the second channel okay make sure that it's in WCS okay now we go back over here and we hand edit ooh hello um, VI the the second region that we just did and we go change the dashes to turn on the dashes there now we go back over here delete that region, region load the serendipitous data which should be right on top of that and then load the original data which should be if we zoom out you'll see that the original data is down here and this is the serendipitous data so let's save the regions here as MIPS24 and we do want to overwrite that yes okay and then do the last frame which is the 70 micron image um, let's make another region. So shape polygon, drop it on there. Now this, the end, the edges of this are a little bit more complicated. So we're going to drag the polygon down there, drag this vertex down there. Now we're going to make a new vertex and drag it there. We're going to make a new vertex and drag it there. And then we're going to go get that vertex and put it over there. Change the region to color to red. Save the region, and this one instead of MIPS 24 is MIPS 70. Okie dokie, FK5. Yep. Okay, now if we go back and get the POS image, then we, can, we have the POS image of the region, the area. We can do load in the BRC2 band region, load in the BRC4 band region, load in the MIPS 24 region. Come on and then load in the 70. Okay, so now you can see on the image on this larger area you can see that we have four band IRAC coverage in the green in the center and two band yes, serendipitous IRAC co coverage in those two fields. We have MIPS 24 coverage in that big square, MIPS 70 coverage in that smaller polygon, and we have serendipitous MIPS 24 data over there. That's the whole point of doing this. If you want to save it all into one region, the colors and dashes will be preserved just fine. You can do save and in this case, instead of well, by channel, we'll do BRC34 all, so that it's all in one. We don't want physical coordinates, we want WCS. All right, so then we can drop that onto, drop that same image regions file onto any other image we want. The other thing that we might want is, say, coordinates. So we can add in a coordinate grid. Let's say that we don't want to have it look just like that. Let's say that we want publication quality, uh, interior, interior numerics, but exterior axes apply. Let's drag this over. We do zoom out. And you can see that it's put coordinates on the image, and it's given us some labels, and it's given us some 
numerics on the side. Now you can fuss around with this. Axis 1, I believe, is the right ascension part. Let's see what happens if I move it by 5%. Yeah, so axis 1 is the right ascension, so I want to actually move it up. So minus 5%, that's too far. Minus 2% is about right. I want to move the declination out a little bit. No, nope, that's the wrong way. Minus 2. No. Mm, let's see. 2. There we go. Now we're getting to the right regime. All right, so now we have right ascension and declination indicated. Maybe we don't want the coordinate numbers in color. So we can do um, <clears throat> color of the axis numbers in white. Apply, and now they're in white. So that's a basic idea. And then in order to save it, you want to do save um, image. And it'll come up as default JPEG, but you probably want PNG 24-bit because because remember what you're looking at on the screen is more than eight bits deep. But a GIF or a JPEG is only going to be eight bits deep. So if you choose those things, you'll be stunned at how it's changed the apparent look of the image in the background. So you probably want PNG 24-bit if you possibly can, and it'll save exactly what it's looking at with all of the white space. So you may have to play with it a little bit and zoom out, zoom in, change the size of your uh, window a little bit, and then you can just save it. You can save the file as whatever, you know, whatever file name you want, and then you can drop it into the proposal or your paper or whatever else you need to.